There's an old Slavic proverb that says even a sheep with mange can still give you a handful of wool. People turn to that saying to comfort themselves when they're stuck making a shady deal but still need to squeeze out at least a little profit. It basically means, sure, the sheep turned out to be a disappointment, but maybe you can still make something useful out of the tiny bit of wool it has. In sun-soaked Australia, that way of thinking has been taken quite literally. Except they're not talking about just one sheep, we're talking millions of them. And with that many sheep, the wool piles up fast, which raises the big question. How do you use all that wool in a way that brings in the most value? Luckily, engineers and agricultural students came up with an answer. Turns out, wool isn't just for spinning into yarn, it can do a lot more. Wait, hang on! Hey, by the way, have you subscribed to our channel yet? If not, now's the perfect time. So, what exactly did Australia decide to do with all that wool? Surely they didn't actually go and bury it underground, right? Welcome everyone and thanks for tuning into our channel. All right, let's get started. Sheep Farming in Australia Sheep are one of the very few animals in the world that are raised not just for their meat or milk, but also specifically for their wool. In this area of livestock farming, China and Australia have long held their place as the two dominant global leaders. You could say these two countries have split the sheep industry right down the middle, each focusing on a different key aspect. In China, which had a sheep population of about 138 million according to the latest figures, the primary demand is for mutton or sheep meat. By exporting the meat of young sheep, China now supplies nearly 30% of the global market for this product. Australia, while trailing slightly behind China in overall sheep numbers, proudly holds second place on the world stage. Back in the year 2000, the number of sheep in Australia stood at a mass of 120 million. That number has declined a bit since then, and today it hovers around 110 million. For a country with such a small human population, that's enormous. There are roughly five sheep for every single person in Australia. But the real question isn't how many sheep there are, it's how they're being used. While China focuses its sheep industry mainly on meat production, Australia puts the spotlight on wool. And when it comes to producing and exporting top-quality wool, Australia is, without question, the world's undisputed leader. So now we have to talk about the most famous breed of sheep in all of Australia. These woolly animals were first brought over from South Africa back in the 1700s. At first, they were raised in the more developed and settled eastern parts of the country, but over time, sheep farming expanded into the central and western highlands of Australia. Once those regions were opened up for farming, the entire country earned a new nickname, the Land of Sheep. Those areas became known far and wide for raising a special breed called the Merino. Merinos are a type of fine wool sheep that produce fleece so soft and high quality it's prized all over the world. But it's not just the quality of the wool that makes Australian sheep stand out, it's also the sheer volume. The Merino, which is the most common breed of sheep in Australia, produces nearly three times as much wool as other breeds on average. Because of that, Australia holds all kinds of shearing records, including an incredible world record of 88 pounds of wool from a single sheep. Of course, to grow that much fleece, that sheep had to spend more than six grueling years out in the pastures, enduring the intense Australian heat. And that brings us to the second key factor we need to look at. That factor is none other than Australia's climate and geographical conditions. The Environment for Sheep Farming in Australia Australia's natural landscape has been one of the most important factors driving the growth of its sheep farming industry. It's well known that raising cattle or water buffalo requires land that's lush and green, terrain that thrives in warm, moist climates. Argentina, for example, is one of the world's leading beef producers and has exactly those kinds of ideal conditions. In contrast, sheep are far less picky about what they eat than cattle are. It's actually pretty common to see sheep grazing even on land that cows have already picked clean. On top of that, Australia has never really been a stronghold for cattle farming, so sheep haven't had to compete with cows for food or space. But the most important thing of all is that, when you look at the big picture, nearly the entire Australian continent is naturally suited to grazing sheep. 
With over 2.9 million square miles of land, the country has more than enough space to support literally millions of sheep roaming in massive flocks. However, this land doesn't do much for agriculture unless it's carefully managed and maintained. Because of the intense heat and dry climate, the soil is easily worn down by water and wind, and desertification can happen alarmingly fast. The land first transforms into a dry, semi-desert, and over time, it can become a barren wasteland where nothing at all can grow. The climate and terrain here are so harsh that nearly two-thirds of the entire country is considered completely unsuitable for farming. Harsh lands like this cover about 22% of Earth's surface, but Australia's agricultural rating is actually worse than the global average for these regions. Still, it's not all bad news. While a hot and arid climate can be tough on people and crops, it turns out to be almost perfect for keeping sheep healthy. Of course, big animals can survive on the scraggly forage that grows in this poor soil, but smaller ones like sheep and goats do just fine. In a way, it's as if nature itself has handed Australia the blueprint for solving this environmental challenge. And the country has followed that blueprint beautifully, turning a tough situation into a major success story. Using Wool Australia was one of the first countries on Earth to come up with the idea of using wool to improve soil quality. If a single sheep produces somewhere between 110 and 155 pounds of wool over the course of its 14-year lifetime, can you even imagine how much wool would come from 110 million sheep? The amount is absolutely massive. And that's especially true when it comes to wool from Australia's merino breed. There's a good reason why merino wool is considered the softest and smoothest in the world. It really lives up to the hype. Wool and wool-based textiles from Australia are exported to almost every country on the planet, and they're used in the production of high-end clothing and luxury apparel. But here's where the problem starts. Even this top-tier wool hit its last market high back in 2019, when it sold for about 2,200 Australian dollars per 220 pounds. After that, demand dropped sharply, sinking to around $800 in 2021. By 2025, it rebounded a bit, climbing back up to about $1,240. As a result, Australia was left with a serious wool surplus, and something had to be done about it. Whether they sold the wool at a loss or just stored it in warehouses waiting for the price to recover, either option meant one thing – no profits. That's when the idea of using wool as fertilizer really started to gain ground. Instead of dumping it in landfills, Australians set out to find the most efficient and meaningful way to put all that wool to use. That led to the development of a special processing machine that turns raw wool into tiny pellets. Researchers discovered that these wool pellets act as a natural type of super-absorbent material, capable of soaking up more than their own weight in water. Once added to dry soil, these pellets gradually release the water they hold, helping the ground stay properly hydrated on its own. This property makes wool pellets behave a lot like natural soil enhancers, such as zeolite or bentonite clay. Just like those mineral-based substances, wool breaks down over time and interacts with the soil in a chemical exchange at the elemental level. After about six months, the wool pellets fully decompose and turn into carbon, which makes up around 50%, nitrogen at 14.6%, sulfur at 5%, and useful elements like calcium, magnesium, and iron. These wool pellets don't just add moisture and minerals to the soil, but they also increase the amount of air pockets in the earth, making it easier for plant roots to grow and spread. And there's another bonus. The pellets help keep snails and slugs away from your plants. That's because the pellets still contain tiny, sharp fibers that create a barrier these pests simply can't crawl across. In that way, wool pellets work very much like traditional bark mulch, which is often spread around plants to retain moisture and improve soil texture. These pellets proved especially effective when used around plum trees. When the wool mulch was combined with cornstarch, plum yields increased by 37%, and the average size of the fruit jumped by nearly 49%. In strawberry farming, the mulch helped reduce temperature swings by 3 to 5 degrees Fahrenheit and retained moisture even during dry spells. So by turning wool into pellets, Australians essentially solved the problem of what to do with wool waste and low-grade fleece. But what about defective wool blankets, sweaters, and other off-spec products that are still made from 100% pure wool? Throwing them away is expensive, and it's a shame to waste all the materials and effort that went into making them. 
so the solution was to mix these items in with raw wool and regular kitchen scraps to make compost. To create this unusual compost blend, defective blankets, discarded wool, and food waste were thrown into large tanks and stirred together at least once a week. The mixture was carefully tested to make sure it met Australian composting standards and didn't contain any harmful substances like heavy metals or pesticide residue. After passing all the tests with flying colors, the wool-based compost was officially approved. In addition to the pellets and compost, Australia has recently started using wool to make liquid fertilizer as well. This liquid fertilizer is stored in bottles and jerry cans, and because it's completely non-toxic, it can be transported in regular containers without any special precautions. What makes it even more convenient is that it can be sprayed directly onto soil using a standard garden sprayer. Using wool to boost crop yields and turn Australia's vast, dry interior into fertile farmland carries huge strategic value for the country. This approach creates a natural, self-sustaining connection between sheep farming and crop production. More sheep means more wool. More wool means more wool-based fertilizer, which enriches the soil and makes it more productive. And better, healthier grazing land means more sheep can thrive. So when Australians bury wool in the ground, it's not some meaningless act. By doing this, they're trying to transform dry, barren land into soil that's full of life and ready to grow. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and give it a like, and feel free to repost it on your socials. Thanks so much for watching everyone! We'll see you next time. Take care.